Hello everyone and welcome to my very first art journal tutorial. I am super excited to be with you guys today. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, as you can see, I'm starting this art journal uh, brand new um, and I'm starting it out the way I start almost all of my art journals, which is by um, gluing together two pages, both the front and the back, um, and then putting some scotch tape down the spine. And I do this to help protect the spine, but also to give it some stability. Um, some of the mediums I use are wet, and I've found that this just keeps my spine in better shape and holds my book together uh, a little bit better. So this is just for some added support. Now, um, if you look, you can see there's some bubbling going on on that first page. Um, that's from where I glued two pages together to give it uh, a little bit um, more stability. Uh, but by the end of this, you'll notice that, um, that that's pretty well not noticeable any longer. It pretty much goes away. Um, here I am just adding a little bit of water to my glue. I like to thin it out a little bit. Actually, that's one of the very first things I do when I get a new bottle of glue is I add just a little bit of water. I find that um, that Aliens glue is a little bit thick, but it is my favorite glue to use. And I'm going to go ahead and apologize to you guys because um, I am using in this video a brand new paintbrush and you're getting ready to see what happens. Um, here's some tissue paper by Tim Holtz. I absolutely love this tissue paper. Um, I think it's beautiful. I am just going to trim up enough to cover uh, both my pages. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and glue that down onto my page. Um, I'm just going to orient it however uh, works best on my layout. So. I'm not too concerned. This is just going to help me um, build a background that I'm happy with. So I'm not too concerned with how it's laid out. Um, some designs I, I look for specific things on the tissue paper, but for this one I'm just trying to get a base uh, for my background. Um, but as I was saying before, you're getting ready to see this is a newer paintbrush and I didn't condition it very well. Um, so you're getting ready to see some bristles all over my page, but that's not a big deal. We're going to hide those. Um, here I'm just laying down some wax paper to protect the other pages in my art journal. And this is a really good technique, especially if you're going to be spraying any inks or um, if you're going to be splattering any inks. That way you can protect the other pages. Um, if you're not worried about it, that's fine, um, but if you are worried about it, this is a great technique to use. Um, so I'm just going to speed up the video here, and as you can see, I've got all these ugly little bristles that are going to show up on my page. Um, I actually went and bought a brand new paintbrush because um, this one shed so badly all over my page. Um, but like I said, it's going to be completely covered up, so it's okay. Uh, here I'm just laying down the first half of my tissue paper, just smoothing out any um, wrinkles that might appear. If you want your page to have a lot of texture, you might leave some of those wrinkles. Uh, but for mine, I was happy um, just with what it had. So I'm not too, I'm not intentionally trying to create wrinkles in my in my uh, tissue paper. But you definitely could if that's what you wanted. So here I'm just going to get this um, completely smoothed out and I always fold my book just to make sure that the spine is going to fold nicely, uh, that there's not going to be any puckering of the tissue paper. And then I do heat, hit it with a little bit of heat because underneath that tissue paper that glue takes a while to dry for some reason. So a little bit longer than it does for even just sticking the two pages together. I think because it just really doesn't have anything to absorb as far as the tissue paper is concerned. It doesn't absorb the paint the way um, paper on paper does. So um, here I am just trimming up the edges of my tissue paper, just flush with the edge of the page. And I like to use these little scissors for that. Um, I know these aren't really paper uh, scissors, but they are so sharp and they have such a fine point that they work great for my purposes, so this is what I always use. 
And then here I'm going to hit it with a little bit of heat again just to uh, get the paper nice and dry. And I have to apologize guys, I lost part of my video. Um, like I said, this is my very first art journal tutorial video, so I lost a little bit of the um, video, just um, some technical difficulties that I've got worked out now. Um, but what I'm showing you there, the very first thing I showed you was some gesso. I uh, painted over the tissue paper with gesso, and then I'm painting it up with some distress paint. Um, and you can use whatever colors you would like to use. Um, I went with this yellow and um, blue. Um, it's Broken China and I'll have to link in the description below what the yellow color is called. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but the blue is Broken China. And as you can see, all I do is I put some paint onto the page and then I use a baby wipe and I just mix it all around. Um, if you mix the two colors together, it actually creates almost a green color that fades into the blue, so that's really nice. Um, and then I'm just going to hit it with my heat gun to make sure it's all completely dry before I continue on with my layout. So here we go, it's all completely dry. And the next thing I'm going to hit it with is uh, Distress Ink in the color Walnut Stain. And then I'm just going to use my dauber uh, tool to... I'm just going to do it along the edges. Um, it really frames the layout nicely and um, also gives it a, a really nice distressed look. So I'm just going to go all the way around the edges um, with that distress ink. And there you can see how nicely um, that Distress Ink um, looks. It gives it a really nice border um, and really does give it a distressed look. So now I'm going to move on. I've got a few pieces of um, just some blank uh, scrapbooking paper. Um, you could just use a white cardstock, whatever you have on hand. And I'm going to be stamping um, my stamp directly onto this paper first and then I'll be fussy cutting around it. This is a stamp set by Fiskars. I really love this set. Um, I really love the flowers that's in in this set so that's what I will be using today. Actually I'll be focusing um, just on this one particular flower throughout my layout. This set is really nice because um, everything in the set almost looks like it was sketched uh, by hand. So it has a really um, organic, fun feeling. It doesn't feel generic or um, it really does feel like it was drawn by hand, which is really cool. I'm going to be using my Stays On ink in black and... I'm just going to stamp this flower twice because I'm going to have two of these in my layout that I'm going to paper piece uh, into my layout. And you can see the on the stamp it's easier to see once it's stamped, but um, you can see the edges aren't crisp. They're, uh, they're sort of sketchy, like it's been hand drawn, and that's why I love this stamp set so much.
And once I have uh, both of my flowers stamped, I'm going to go ahead and uh, come in with one of my big brush markers. And I'm just going to add a little touch of color to this uh, stamp. Now, if you wanted to do a lot of blending of multiple colors, I would recommend painting a layer of gesso on your paper before you stamp your flowers. Um, however, I just wanted to use my Faber-Castell um, big brush marker um, just in this single color, and then I was and uh, then I'm just leaving my petals white. So I'm not too worried about blending uh, my colors for this particular design. Um, but like I said, however, if you, if you do want to blend the colors, you'll want to come in with some gesso and paint that over your paper and make sure it's nice and dry um, before you stamp your flowers. And the reason um, I recommend to do that is because um, the gesso gives you a few seconds to move the ink around before it dries permanent. It is India ink. Um, so you can actually paint on some gesso and it'll give you a few seconds whereas the paper will actually absorb it right away. So I've sped up the video here. I'm just going to fussy cut um, around both of these flowers because we're going to be paper piecing these on to our layout. And I absolutely love the way these turn out. I'm super happy with it. The next thing I'm going to be using is um, a stamp called Newsprint by Fiskars. And I was originally going to put it on that block, but then as I looked at it, I decided um, that I would actually just kind of roll the stamp on to give it more of a distressed look. I don't want to cover up too much of my background, and I didn't want the stamp to be real crisp and clean. So I'm actually just rolling the stamp over my ink pad. You can see the stamp isn't completely inked up. And then I'm just uh, sort of pressing it onto my layout. I'm not too concerned. I really am going for uh, a distressed look with this stamp. This is just to add some additional interest in the background. And at about this point, I'm starting to realize that the stamp came out quite a bit darker than uh, what I had planned. And probably what I would do if I was to redo this layout, I would probably put it into the background before I painted the gesso on and then the, the colors um, But my, uh, with my distress paint. But I do like um, that, it, that it adds some additional interest and breaks up the background a bit. And this next stamp set that I, that I showed you there, um, this is another stamp set by Stampendous. I actually like the stems that are included in that set a little bit better than I liked the stems in the Fisker set. So I'm just mixing and matching um, the two stamp sets to get a, a look that I like. And there's actually two, um, actually I believe there's three different stems that come in this Stampendous set, um, but I'm just going to use my two favorite. And you could definitely draw these yourself. Um, even the flowers, you could draw those yourself. I just happen to have these two stamp sets that I have been dying to use in a layout, so but these are not, none of these um, designs are really difficult to achieve by hand, even if you are not a fantastic sketch um, artist. You could still achieve this very easily. You could probably even go online and find um, a flower to print out. This is about the time I'm trying to decide if I really like that uh, newsprint in the background, and as you can see, it doesn't come off. So what I've decided to do is I just, I've decided that I'm going to go and uh, add a little bit more of the Distress Paint on top. And that just pushes 
that dark uh, ink into the background just a little bit. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. So it gives it enough that it pushes it to the back, um, but it's still, still pretty evident that it's there. So. By the end of the layout, I'm really happy with, with how it looks, and that's what matters. So if you don't like the look of that, you certainly don't have to do that in your layout. Um, if you like it a lot, you could definitely do more of it, um, what, whatever your preference is. So now at this point, I'm just going to hit it with my heat gun to make sure all that additional distress paint is uh, nice and dry before I start adding in the shading for my flowers. I don't want to get any of that paint onto my big brush markers um, because that will ruin the tips. So just be real cautious that everything's dry on your layout when you move step to step because you don't want to damage your supplies. And then from here, I'm just trying to get an idea of where I'm going to glue down the flower portion um, of my design. Now, typically uh, what I would do is I would actually glue down my flowers first, let those dry, and then I would go in and add my shading. But I really wanted to shade around my flowers with this brown color. and. I know that if I start smearing the color around those petals, my white petals will soon be brown. And I didn't want to mix my colors. I wanted, I really wanted my petals to stay that um, vibrant white. So I'm actually just tracing around the petals, stopping every few seconds to smear the color so I can get um, a nice um, shaded area without turning my petals brown. Usually I will use a color that's complementary to the background. So if I have a blue background, I'll use just a darker blue um, big brush marker. But I really loved the Distress Ink that um, is on the edges of the layout and I liked how it gave it a real rustic um, and distressed look so I went with the same sort of distressy brown color uh, to shade around my flower and at this point I'm really happy with how the shading looks so I decide I'm gonna go in and actually add a little bit of a harsher shade than what I usually put on my layout Typically, I don't put my shading down so heavy. Um, usually, I try to blend it really well and make it subtle, but um, like I said, I'm just really happy with the way the distressed edges came out with the distress ink, and I really like the way this looks. It, I always try to shade around my paper piecing um, because I feel like it gives it, uh, it sets it off nicely from the background and gives it a really unique look. Usually it's not that harsh, usually it's a little bit more subtle, but um, I'm really happy with how this came out. So now I'm using my Liquitex Matte Medium to stick down my flower. I'm just going to go in with a paintbrush and I'm just going to put some Matte Medium on the back. And then I always completely cover my paper piecing with Matte Medium over the top as well. So you'll see me do that in a second. The reason I do that actually is the same reason that I recommended putting the gesso down um, on top of the flower because uh, before you do the stamping um, because it helps if you want to blend your big brush markers um, several colors if you want to smear it um, and then I just like the way it looks once it's dry but certainly I don't plan on doing any additional shading and I won't to these flowers so I certainly don't have to put the additional matte medium down on top but I just I do like the way it looks once it's dry so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, paint on a thin coat 
and I'm just painting past the edge. And as long as um, you've had that ink for the shading down for a little bit, it won't smear or anything. It is India ink, so it is permanent. And then once I get this all completely covered and stuck down, I'm just going to go to the next flower and do the same thing. Okay, and so I'm really happy with how my flowers turned out. Um, now I'm going to use some Liquitex modeling paste. And um, I couldn't find my spatula, so I actually just grabbed an old um, credit card or store loyalty card and I chopped it up into a few different usable sized pieces. And I'm going to use that as a spatula today. For some reason, when I was making the video, I could not find my spatula. However, it, I have found it since then. So, this is a great alternative, though, if you don't want to go out and buy a spatula, or if you need a new one, or you've misplaced yours, whatever the case may be, um, you can certainly just use an old credit card or store loyalty card, cut up into small, usable pieces. I also like using these cards specifically because if you have a small area that you're wanting to add the modeling paste to, um, you can certainly cut the card skinnier and then it will not apply quite as much. It's easier to control um, where the modeling paste goes through your stencil. And this is a great stencil by Tim Holtz. I believe it's called Faded Dots. It's one of my favorite Tim Holtz stencils. Um, he has a lot, there's a lot of really great stencils in that collection, um, but this is definitely one of my go-to stencils for sure. And you can add um, as little or as much modeling paste as your heart desires. I love modeling paste. I use it in a majority of my layouts. I just love the texture and I love the way it looks and I think it helps to break up um, some of the blank areas. Just make sure that your modeling paste is completely dry before you move on to the next uh, step in your layout or otherwise you'll end up with smeared modeling paste. And if you get any excess anywhere it's really easy to remove. Um, if it's still wet you can usually use a baby wipe and wipe it right up. Um, if it's starting to harden a little bit I'll just use the edge of my nail and I can usually get it to pop right off. It's a little bit harder once it's fully dry, but um, if it's just starting to dry, you can usually just pop it right off with your nail. And I'll just hit it with the heat gun, make sure that it's all set. This is an alphabet set by Tim Holtz. I love this set because you can stamp um, just uh, with, the, with the set and just leave it as is and you'll see it's a little bit of a distressed look or if you want it to have a little less distress to it you can do what I'm about to do after I finish stamping the quote um, you can go in with a matching big brush uh, marker that matches the ink that you stamped in and you can fill in any of the distressed areas and you'll see me do that after I finish stamping my quote my quote is, every flower must grow through dirt, through dirt. And I always try to find my quote before I design my layout, um, so I can design my layout around my quote. Usually my layout inspirations come from a specific quote and then from there I design what I want my layout to look like after that. I love this stamp set. Um, it's 
so elegant on one hand and on the other um, it's rustic you can make it really look as if it's beaten up and um, you can really make it look as if it's distressed for this specific layout I don't really like the distressing so I've decided I'm going to go in um, like I said with my big brush marker in black that matches my black ink and I'm just filling in the distressed areas. It's extremely easy to do. You just stay uh, in the lines and color. I suppose you could um, color around it and change the way each letter looks even, but for my purposes this works great. So I'm just going in and touching up the areas that are distressed from the stamp. And I always like to highlight my letters. I think it makes them stand out. So I'm going to go in with a Jelly Roll white gel pen. And then I'm just going to add some accents to each letter. Again, you don't have to do this. That's totally optional. Use your imagination. Do whatever you like. But I am absolutely in love with the way this looks. And you'll probably see me do this for just about every layout I do. I love to highlight my letters. Now, once I finish highlighting my letters, the layout is actually pretty well finished. Um, I could stop right there as soon as the letters are highlighted and I would be perfectly happy with it. Looking at the layout, I thought it looked just a little bit dark for my taste, so I thought I'd go in and add just a little accent, something to just brighten it up just a little. So I've found a swirl look that I like that I'm gonna go in with a embossing tool and, and add in. I also decided here, as you can see, I'm, I'm adding in um, a little leaf to one of my flowers. And then you'll see me hit it with my embossing tool after I add this leaf. I just love this stamp set. It's so cute and you can customize your flowers in such neat and unique ways. So here I am with my swirl, like I was talking about before. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of embossing just to brighten up the page a little bit. And I'm just trying to decide where my swirl will fit. And then I'm going to decide which of these embossing powders I want to use. I am going to choose the teal, however in hindsight I wish I had gone with the white. And again, this could um, you could totally skip this step and this layout is still really really fun to do and um, you could even brighten it up with different colors in your background, different colors on your flowers even, whatever speaks to you. Now I'm going in with my Versamark embossing ink pad and I'm just going to stamp in this unique swirl design that um, came with my flower set. And now from here I'm just hitting it with some heat from my embossing tool. And I'm really happy with this layout. 
I love the way it turned out. I think it's really fun. If you guys enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, this is one of just many art journals that I have in mind um, to share with you guys. So like I said, definitely hit the like button and subscribe and that'll tell me that you enjoyed this video and there will be more to come.